Yo, what's up, guys? James Carter TV here to recap Super Bowl 49. Now, I am on an unusual webcam than what I am normally on, but currently my other computer has some hard drive problems and it's getting fixed and I'll be back on there soon so I'm on this one momentarily but I'm here to recap Super Bowl 49 the game in which my YouTube career was on the line I betted my YouTube career on the New England Patriots and here I stand today because of Tom Brady and because of Marcus Butler or whatever that clown's name is and because of Pete Carroll uh, because Pete Carroll showed why he is not as great as everyone makes him out to be I mean we will get to the call later but let me start by saying this it, people love to say hey Pete Carroll he's great he's so aggressive oh my god did you see his fake field goal against the Green Bay Packers how clever but we are so subjective as individuals we only like to grant worth and value when plays work but when plays don't work when they don't go the way we thought they would then we like to say oh what a terrible call his fake field goal against the Green Bay Packers was an terrible call it worked but it was a terrible call and if this play his last play the Seahawks last play to Ricardo Walken would have worked Everyone would have said he's a genius. He's so aggressive. He's putting the games in his hands. But whatever. I'll get to more of that later. Let's go chronologically for this one. We started off. Super Bowl 49 with both teams trading punts. I mean, the, the, they would get some first downs. The Patriots would, and the Seahawks couldn't move the football at all. And it goes to show, man, the Seahawks offense, this has been true all season, is very inconsistent. They cannot consistently move the football. They only move it in spurts in big plays. The Patriots got the first touchdown of the day. It was to Brandon LaFell, Tom Brady to Brandon LaFell. Um, and I forgot to mention before that, on the first drive, or the second drive of the game, for the Patriots, uh, Tom Brady went down through an interception. Okay, it was a terrible interception, but who cares? He won the game. So, Brandon LaFell gets a touchdown, touchdown, Patriots 7 0. Okay, great. Now, the Seahawks turn, and they eventually go down and they get a touchdown themselves and do in large part to Chris Matthews. I mean, this is a guy that came out of nowhere. He's 6'5, so he just jumps up and catches these deep balls from Russell Wilson. And God knows there's only two things that Russell Wilson does well, and that's buy time and run uh, out of the pocket and run for some yards and throw the deep ball. That's it, people. That's it. I mean, I'm sorry. That's all this guy does. He's a game manager. He has two skills, and they are what I just um, said to you. Like, he throws the deep ball very well. He's great. And he runs the ball well, and he runs around well, but that's it. Now, everything else, he is average or proficient or below average at the quarterback position, but I digress. Moving on. Alright, so great. 7-7. Tom Brady goes down the field, scores a touchdown. Rob Gronkowski, beautiful touchdown, beautiful throw, beautiful catch. 14-7 Patriots. Now, at this juncture, there's about eh, 36 seconds left in the game. You got to get off the field here for the New England Patriots, but the Seahawks start the drive. They start this 80-yard drive by running the football. That's a bad call. That's a bad call. Now it worked. They got 17 yards off that running play, and then they threw it after that. That's a bad play call to me. I would have passed the ball, but since it worked, we don't want to point that out. We want to say what a great play call. It was. He didn't even want to score there. He was just like, oh. We got 17 yards? Okay, let's try. I mean, like, that, that's not good coaching right there, but whatever. We will grant PK. Oh, my God. What a great decision. What are you talking about? Punks. I mean, this was not a great play call. He walked into a touchdown drive at the end of the first half. So eventually, after a couple deep passes, I think Russell Wilson's good for, they get a touchdown. The Seattle Seahawks do. Marshawn Lynch, I believe it was. Um, 
And that's it. I mean, no, no, actually, it was Chris Matthews on that one. And, okay, so there you go. It's 14-14. Great. Katy Perry sucked. I mean, yeah, well, okay, she was average. I mean, she tried to do uh, big things. Her outfit stunk. Like, her first outfit, the fire, was a piece of crap. Followed by that volleyball monstrosity. I was laughing my ass off with the sharks that were dancing around because they were hilarious to me. And... Very average, very petite. I mean, you punks on Twitter are talking about how she was better than Beyonce. Get out of here with that load of bull. Okay, Bruno Mars and Beyonce, Beyonce were much better than her. Why? Because they're actually doing something. They're dancing. They're moving. They're entertaining. Ask yourself a serious question. Which one was more entertaining from this Super Bowl performance? Was it Katy Perry or was it the props around Katy Perry? And I guarantee you, you will be saying the props, the props, the costumes, the craziness I was going on was better than Katy Perry. Beyonce did a great job dancing in her performance. Bruno Mars did a great job dancing in his performance. Katy Perry was held up by a bunch of bullcrap props that elevated her performance to better than it actually was. But we're not here to talk about that crap. We're here to talk about football. Now, on to the second half of football. Seahawks drive down the field, field goal, okay? Patriots can't move the ball. Seahawks uh, get an interception. Go down the field, touchdown, 24 to 14. Now, I saw all these punks and losers and nincompoops go on to Twitter and say, game over. This, Mind you, this is with seven minutes left in the third quarter. And I thought all you Seahawk losers would have learned by your own team that in this NFL league, in this sport, in this country, these games are Almost essentially never over, especially when you're facing another great team. I mean, how many times do we need to learn this lesson? I learned this lesson when I was seven years old, and I was watching the Titans fluke against the uh, New England Patriots, I believe, in 2003. I mean, do we, how many times do we need to learn this lesson? This game is not over, please, and we still buy into this crap. So, it's time to play fourth quarter time. Now, this is what was essential to me. The Seahawks did not move the ball uh, after their touchdown in the third quarter um, until their final drive. The Patriots defense got huge stops. Now, they didn't get a turnover until the last part of the game, too. They got stops. They stopped the Seahawks from advancing and progressing the football down the field. And Tom Brady had plenty of opportunities. I think he had in total five opportunities, but he only needed to convert on two, and he did eventually start of the fourth quarter, or actually like 12 minutes left in the fourth quarter, Tom Brady begins his first of two drives that cemented his legacy as my best quarterback that I've ever seen, and in my opinion, in NFL history. Going down the field, mechanically, surgically, advancing the ball from point to point to point, proving why he is the best, dissecting this Seahawks defense. Touchdown after touchdown, two huge drives. And we need to keep in mind, this was essentially... A road game for the New England Patriots. The crowd was about 80% Seahawks fans, and they were loud. So Tom Brady is essentially on the road, leading his team, dissecting the Seahawks defense that has proven to be dominant throughout the season, and ends up with 28 points. That is incredible. And on the offensive side for the Seattle Seahawks, Russell Wilson's missing passes, and you start to see they're not good enough when they throw the football. They do a bunch of bull. They do a bunch of running back uh, crap and wide receiver junk. I mean, this is a junk offense that is skated by to this point, and we're finally humiliated on the national stage to me. So, eventually, though, Patriots score. Touchdown to Julian Edelman. And now we have two minutes left in the game. Now, Russell Wilson gets his junk play to Marshawn Lynch. Okay, congratulations. Great. Um, 
then they moved the ball a little bit more. Great. Patriots could not get a pass rush. Only sacked Russell Wilson once today. Absolutely absurd. Um, go all the way down to, uh, I mean, they get a miracle play. Just a I mean, This guy just throws the ball up and gets lucky. Throws the ball up to Jermaine Kurz. Gets a lucky, lucky, lucky play. And they're down at the five. And then Marshawn Lynch runs it, gets down to the one. Now, I thought that now at this juncture, I was really thinking the game was over. And I was yelling at Bill Belichick, call a timeout, call a timeout. And I still, in hindsight... I still think he should have called a timeout there because if they get in, at least you get the ball back within a minute or like 50 seconds left. That's huge. All you need is a field goal if they score a touchdown. But he didn't, and the Seahawks stupidly, foolishly threw the ball to Ricardo Lockett. It was it a bad call? Absolutely. But there's plenty of bad calls that Pete Carroll has gotten away with up to this point. But now that he got it wrong and the result didn't go the way he thought it would, now we want to bash this guy. This guy has been making bad and gutsy calls all year. But because they've been working, we've been letting this guy go. And now, oh, we're going to let this guy go. Russell Wilson is a game manager. This guy only threw 21 passes, people. Tom Brady, the guy on the other sideline, threw 50. Ask yourself who's the game manager here because I'm telling you, it's not Tom Brady. Uh, it, Russell Wilson is a game manager. And he may not be next year. He may not be the year after that. He may not. He may end up being the best quarterback of all time. But at this moment, in this moment, he is a game manager. In 2002, when Tom Brady was a two-time, I say well, it was a one-time Super Bowl champion, he was a game manager. And at this moment, Russell Wilson is a game manager. And he couldn't manage the game from behind. So that's it. I'm sorry. Um, here I am, still on YouTube, and I'm not going anywhere. Patriots, I had them winning 27 to 23 by four points. They won 28 to 24 by four points. Richard Sherman started crying like a little punk. The Seahawks started spikes like a little punk uh punks and i mean like come on get a grip um and good luck getting back to the super bowl because it just doesn't happen the packers will be back the cardinals will be healthy and the lions are coming i the giants are coming to me so good luck getting back you had an opportunity to repeat first time since 2004 and you didn't do it all right and here i am james carter tv bashing you as always and I, it's not because I hate them. I'm just here to be honest. And I, there's a lot of crap um, that has been displayed, and I just have to call it out on it. And uh, on the, the Patriots side, I mean, I'm about to say, Tom Brady threw two bad passes. But you know what? He had two game-winning drives, or two big drives to win the game. And we love the Seahawks defense. They run on two game-winning touchdown drives in the fourth quarter. 14 points in the fourth quarter. That is not a great defense. They did not show up at that moment. So Russell Wilson did not show up in his moment. Pete Carroll did not show up in his moment. And the Seattle defense did not show up in their moments. And that is what defines Super Bowl 49 to me. So... There it is. The NFL season has come to a close. I'm sure I'm going to get all kinds of hate in the comments. But at the end of the day, I'm up here. And you're down there. James Carter TV. Until next time, I'm out. Peace.